Judaism. I am David Robertson. Thank you so much for being a part of the program, for being a part of the discussion, for all the support. Um, I, I thoroughly appreciate it. It's been, um, it's been rewarding, to say the least. Um, one of the things I want to preface before I get on to um, the topic for today is just kind of a reminder <clears throat> that deism derives from within. I mean, it's something that you know, you utilize the gifts that have been given to you, uh, you know, through reason, um, boldly questioning everything, um, and coming up with your own conclusions. Um, but it's, 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 and I guess maybe the point is, is that each deist is going to look at the world around them, the information provided, and they're, they're going to differ a little bit here or there on, um, on uh, certain topics from within. When I, when I'm talking about any given topic. Um, I'm not saying that all deists believe the exact same way that I do. Um, obviously there are uh, subsects of, uh, of uh, deism that, that kind of delve in and, and, you know, I guess split the hairs. Um, and that's fine. Um, the idea is, of course, is to look at the information and, and come up with your own conclusion. So that's important and I just kind of wanted to um, you know, I, I guess reiterate that idea because, um, you know, once again, it's not the end all. And, and it's important for you to be a part of the discussion because I learn from you as well. Uh, that's one of the wonderful things that I love about deism is it's, it's a continual process of learning and education. Once again, I've said this before, that deism is about learning. It's about expanding the mind and, and constantly improving on ideas. Um, so, with that being said, we'll move on. Today's topic is about free will. Uh, this comes up uh, in religious debate um, quite often, uh, you know, via, you know, God having a, a plan, predestiny, free will. And, and what I want to talk about today is kind of how this all lumps together. And in fact, it was this very topic that um, really kind of drove me over the edge uh, into deism. And I want to talk about that uh, a little bit today. Free will, definition, the power of acting without the constraint of necessity or fate, the ability to act at one's own discretion. Um, <clears throat> George Borey said it best, free will is not the same as freedom of action. Freedom of action refers to the things that prevent a willed action from being realized. For example, being in prison means you are not free to paint the town red. Being in a straitjacket means you are not free to wave Hello, being paralyzed means not being able to move your limbs. These are not issues of free will. Examples of free will would be going to a movie, uh, performing a criminal act, saying a prayer, uh, dating outside of your race, practicing your own religion, um, getting a drink, holding, uh, holding off till the next bathroom break, <laughs> you know, things of that nature. You can choose. Things that you can choose uh, in the moment um, are free will. As an individual, you have free will. That is my belief, um, because only you can restrict that will. Um, you can believe or want to do something, but you can stop yourself from doing it based on decisions, based on outside or internal stimuli for that matter. Um, and an outside uh, source can restrict uh, freedom of action. Uh, as we addressed before, I should say as George Borey uh, stated, you know, being in handcuffs. That is a uh, restriction of action. Uh, but then we have to ask ourselves, is free will real? Um, and it's crazy to think that free will could even be up for debate, but it is, surprisingly enough. Um, and there are some, and I'm going to address this, Sam Harris, uh, a Stanford graduate with a PhD in neuroscience from UCLA, the author of End of Faith, sorry, The End of Faith, it's a best-selling book, uh, that says free will is an illusion. Uh, our wills are simply not of our own making. Uh, thoughts and intentions emerge from background causes of which we are unaware and over which we exert no conscious control. He says we assume that we could have made other choices in the past and that uh, we also assume that we consciously originate uh, our thoughts and actions in the present. Both of these assumptions are false according to Harris. Of course, he's basing this on the fact that the brain makes decisions before consciousness is aware of it. All right, and, and I concede to that. I mean, it's true. 
Uh, as Harris puts it, activity in the brain's motor cortex can be detected some 300 milliseconds uh, before a person feels that he has decided to move. Now, I challenge that idea. I mean, it is true. You, your, your body, your brain, everything does occur before you consciously are aware that it, that it happens. However, I challenge the idea that free will doesn't exist with the three-role method. We're going to start off with logic. If you ask, sorry, if I were to ask you right now to raise your hand, you probably wouldn't do it because I'm talking to you through a video. You've, you've kind of already made a decision uh, to sit and listen and watch. Uh, well, and that in itself, you know, you made a decision to watch this. But if I asked you to defy that decision to prove the point of uh, free will to yourself, you could very well reverse the initial decision. Uh, simply to demonstrate free will. For instance, I ask you right now, raise your hand, will, or will you raise your hand? Um, many of you probably won't. You're going to sit here and continue to watch me. A few of you will raise your hand just to prove to yourself and I guess maybe to prove the point that you have the free will to do it. Um, yes, the body and brain operate at amazing speeds and it will, it, it will make decisions before the conscious is aware. However, we do have the ability to override these initial decisions based on new information. So this goes into cause and effect. So before I ask the question, I tell you to make a decision of yes or no. For instance, uh, I tell you I'm, I'm, I'm about to ask you a question or I'm going to ask you to do something. I need you to answer in your head right now yes or no. Then I provide the request of, well, we can use it again as raising your hand. But then explain that I want you to do the opposite of what you had already decided then you have the choice to follow my request uh, or decide on your own whether or not you're going to raise your hand. This is an example of how you can override uh, nature's um, initial response. You know, raise your hand. No, I'm not going to. I'm watching a video. I'd be silly to sit in my house and raise my hand. But then I'm asking you to do it to prove it to yourself. Okay, I'll raise my hand. You raise your hand. You just made a decision. That was free will. Occam's razor, and of course the reason, Free will exists on multiple levels, even when the brain made the decision and before consciousness became aware of the decision. We confused it and overcame the decision. You had the free will to do it because of additional information. It was a choice. And after, conscious, uh, after the conscious became aware of the option, and that's what it is, and that's, that's the critical point in free will, are the options, you would then have made a choice based on the confused information. And this is important to understand because in nature we're given plenty of options every day and the body does make decisions before the conscious mind is aware of it and that's the self-preservation factor um, for instance fight or flight sometimes we can't make the decision uh, the initial decision um, of fight or flight somebody throws a fist at you you know you're gonna flinch or you're gonna fight back um, but you can always override that um, say your say your initial reaction was flight you want to run away from the situation you may run 10 steps, five steps, maybe even two steps, and then realize, you know what, no, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna run away. You make a conscious decision to turn around and fight, even though you know that uh, the outcome will, you know, maybe give you a broken bone, maybe a cut, bleeding of the mouth, what have you. Um, this is a choice, definition of choice, an act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or more possibilities. Um, if you're just sitting around, sure, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind are going to make decisions at random. You're not even going to realize that it's happening. Uh, the autonomic nervous system, for crying out loud, is, a, is an excellent example of things that are happening in the background in the body that we're just not really privy to. I mean, think about it. When was the last time you thought about really taking a breath or making your heart beat or making your, uh, uh, you know, your nerves fire? I mean, it doesn't happen. These are things that are happening in the background, so you don't have to. Um, it's my contention that free will exists uh, because we don't always know ahead of time what the possibilities are, uh, what the possibilities are, let alone the question. To me, it's inconceivable uh, to believe for a second that free will doesn't exist uh, because of this premise alone. So religiously speaking, if people have free will, the ability to decide, if you will, then we must concede to the idea that such decisions are derived internally based on many different factors, but including natural stimuli, as we've talked about before. But a good example would be, um, let's say you're standing in the middle of a bunch of trees and a tree is getting ready to fall. You can make a decision at that point to stand there, 
I mean, obviously you're going to have your fight or flight uh, mechanism kick in. The tree is actually getting ready to fall on you. But you can decide right then and there, wait, I'm just not going to move. I'm going to allow God to, you know, put this in God's hands uh, and then you'll get crushed. Or you can decide to move out of the way. Those are options that are, are put in place. Sure, your physical being will give you the initial reaction necessary to survive, but you can override that. Um, even watching this video, for crying out loud, was a decision. You made a conscious decision to sit down and watch this video. It wasn't part of some bigger plan. Uh, you simply made a decision. Um, and, and that's important because even as we address that situation, you have the decision right now to turn it off and move on to a different video. Um, obviously, you're still with me, so uh, you made that decision to, to stick around. Many religious texts explain that God gave man free will so that man could love God willingly. Makes sense. So by that rationale, it would behoove God to not intervene uh, with free will because doing so would alter this primary directive. I mean, it's, it's plain and simple. So with that being said, if we have free will, we must then concede that there wouldn't be divine inter intervention to restrict that free will. Um, now, at this point, there's usually a lot of debate. Um, and, and that's good. I mean, debate is obviously healthy. Well, let me provide you with uh, some answers to the many questions that uh, you've probably got. And, and to do that, let me share some definitions. Evil. Uh, that's a big word. Now, I don't mean it as in some sort of supernatural way. I'm just going to use it as a as a, a definition, I guess, a, a, a very secular definition, which is profoundly immoral uh, and uh, malevolent, okay? To intervene or intervention, come between uh, so as to prevent or alter a result or course of events. Prayer, a solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God or an object of worship. Plan, decide on and arrange in advance. Destiny, the hidden power believed to control what will happen in the future. Fate. Uh, free will, and I want to reiterate this definition. The power of acting without the constraint of necessity uh, uh, or fate. The ability to act on one's uh, own discretion. Now, the religious arguments that often come up with the free will debate, as I've addressed it thus far, uh, is that God does have a plan. All things happen for a reason. God is all-knowing. And uh, God gave man free will, which allows man to God love willingly. Uh, the problem is, is that if you look at these individually, you'll see blatant contradictions between some of those um, ideas. For instance, I'm going I'm to give you a, a cyclical situation here. Uh, so try to follow me. And like I said, I know it's, it's complex, but it's also quite simple when we break it down. If God intervened in our lives... Uh, i.e. stepped in to correct anything, uh, that by definition means he's in control. Now, if God controlled what will happen, i.e. your decisions and actions, uh, that by definition negates free will. You no longer have the decision uh, or the ability to decide, um, let alone be able to dictate your own actions. So, and, and by the way, that, that does allude to the idea of a plan or predestined um, you know, outcomes, what have you, uh, which of course would be a plan, which are things arranged in advance. So if things were arranged in advance, i.e. your life, uh, that by definition obviously negates free will. And then of course if God answered requests via prayer, uh, that by definition would demonstrate intervention. Uh, but if God intervened in our lives, stepped in to correct, that by definition means he's in control. And that process continues. And you have to continually ask, question, I guess, uh, that approach. Because if, if there is intervention on any form, it literally negates everything. Um, it, it's very finite in that perspective. And like I said, it goes on in that circle. So based on the preceding, uh, preceding I present the following. Intervention of any kind uh, would negate free will. If God intervened, why would anyone need to follow certain rules such as the Ten Commandments? Um, rules are put in place to govern. And if you're not in control, if there is a plan, if there is a predestined outcome, and God is in control, there would be no reason for rules. Uh, because you would just be doing whatever the plan was anyway. Um, 
following rules demonstrates the free will to make decisions or not. You can follow the rules or not. Um, and obviously that kind of illustrates the idea that there are rules. If God intervened, free will would be unnecessary. Making decisions would be unnecessary. If God had a plan, why would anyone try to invoke his will with prayer uh, or fear the decisions? Um, or the outcome for that matter. And if you were somehow able to invoke his will, or his favor, or get a request, uh, wouldn't this negate free will uh, as well as the current plan? Because if he has a plan and you're praying to change the current events, and he changes that, that negates the plan and negates free will. Um, if God has a plan and all things happen for a reason, why would you fear for your soul or worry about your actions? God would be in control and would step in to enforce the plan. Um, <clears throat> if your life is predestined, why would you have to worry about being good versus bad? Um, really, I mean, once again, wouldn't how, whatever that outcome be, be a part of that plan, if there really is a plan and there is control and intervention? If God intervened, why wouldn't he stop the horrible things that go against him? I mean, that's, that's a primal question right there. And then if God was all-knowing, had a plan, was all-powerful, and was in control and knew the future, uh, what would be the point of free will? There, there, there really would be no reason for it, because everything is already predestined. Um, so if you think about it, if everything was predestined, you really wouldn't have free will at all. And if this plan really existed, why would anyone try to avoid their evil thoughts? If you decided to do something evil, wouldn't that also be part of the plan? And if not, and you decided to act on these thoughts, wouldn't that mess up God's plan? If it messed up the plan, doesn't that illustrate the lack of destiny? And if destiny was real, wouldn't God be forced to intervene in order to stay with the plan? And then, of course, by doing so, negate free will. Now, of course, you'll notice that what I'm doing here is I'm presenting the, I've, I've presented the exact same question, or equation, if you will, uh, in four different ways. And this is important to understand because you have to approach any given situation from multiple angles. If you don't, you're really not going to get the full answer. Um, I don't know. I mean, we, we can approach it from, well, let's approach it from one more direction. Why would anyone be afraid of evil um, if there was a plan, if there was predestiny? Um, there would be no reason to fear. In fact, the defense mechanism, which is fear, probably wouldn't be, probably wouldn't even be in place. We wouldn't have something such as fear. Fear is a defense mechanism. You are afraid of something, and when you're afraid of something, you're protecting yourself from something. For instance, like bees. Some people are afraid of bees. Why? Maybe they were stung at some point in time, and that fear kicks in to help them avoid being stung again. Uh, that's, that's a defense mechanism put in by nature to help avoid the effect of that cause. Um, and this is a little off topic here, but since God created all and if souls are eternal, what purpose would God have in killing anybody? Because at the end of the day, he'd still have to deal with that soul. And that's just something else to think about, but that, that does tie into the free will, bad actions, evil versus good um, decision paradigm. Um, but, you know, obviously something, something to think about. But when we look at it this way, we can see some obvious contradictions in ideology when, when we start asking these questions. Reason simply uh, doesn't allow us to negate the fact that uh, these very ideas contradict. Which is why we don't subscribe to doctrine which tells us that these things are not contradictions. And what I mean by that is there are doctrines that pretty much say that, well, that's just the way God wants it. Yes, these are contradictory ideas, but that's just the way it is, and that's, you know, that doesn't make sense. Especially not for a deist. A deist will look at these contradictions and be like, okay, well, there's obviously a reason for the contradiction, but I have been given reason, uh, the ability to question, the ability to think, um, and, and I need to find those answers. So, um, what we have to concede here, uh, or concede to, I should say, is that evil does exist. I mean, the uh, immensely immoral, uh, uh, malevolent people, uh, and actions, I guess, for that matter, people make bad decisions every day. Uh, this because of free will. Nothing stops them from committing these evil acts, 
only only themselves uh, at the end of the day, or perhaps self-preservation, which you know would would kind of ties into my part of the debate. But murder, rape, robbery, war, etc., occurs daily. And then my question, I guess, at that point is what kind of God allows these atrocities to continually occur? But they do. Um, all the time. And uh, in a lot of ways throughout history, in God's name. So, uh, define irony. And if, you know, I, well, that goes back into the plan. If there is a plan, and that is part of the plan, and if he did plan such atrocities, um, or your daily life in general, once again, what's the point of praying and asking for help? Um, and if evil truly is part of the plan, then why do we judge these people? I mean, seriously, why would we judge somebody if that is part of the plan? Why would we uh, arrest them? Why would we incarcerate them? Why would we sentence them to death? Why would we do these things if it's all part of the plan? We would just allow it to happen and move on and, and concede to the idea that, uh, that that is part of God's plan and that's the way he wanted it. But we don't because we understand that that's evil and we understand that they can make decisions and they can also make the decision not to do these evil things. So at least that's our understanding uh, currently. So as humans, we judge, we punish, uh, we abort, we do some horrible things uh, ourselves, we make mistakes, but ultimately we decide. Based on the three-rule method, and as a deist, I've kind of decided on a, a few things here. The only plan is that nature has the lead. God does not intervene because doing so would negate free will altogether, as I've stated before. If free will isn't real and everything is predestined according to some plan, we have no reason to pray. Uh, by taking away free will, we would have nothing to fear by our decisions. Even decisions as simple as drinking antifreeze. Smells good. Tastes good. We ought to drink it. But, of course, we don't because we understand that it will end our life. And if we did, based on that thought process, then, once again, that illustrates the idea of free will. Because people do drink antifreeze because they know it will kill them. And that would bring up another idea, too. Uh, suicide. Uh, would suicide truly be a sin if everything was predestined? So you would be born to sin, and by some religious doctrine, you would be born to sin and go to hell. That is a horrible plan. I'm sorry, but that, that's a bad deal, especially for, the, for that poor soul who, uh, who was born and predestined to kill themselves. I, I just have, have I've, well, I cannot person, personally subscribe to that idea. Uh, our constant decisions change the possibility of any preconceived plan, in my opinion. If our decisions were predestined, they wouldn't be decisions in the first place. Um, and if we can't make decisions, we can't choose to love God willingly. Um, and I'm sure you can probably see where this is going. Uh, it is very cyclical in, in, in that aspect. Um, God provided nature. And nature has provided us the necessary tools for survival. Once again, that's instinct, fight or flight, uh, self-preservation, uh, what have you. We don't always make the right decisions, obviously, uh, when we exercise our free will. Um, but we still have it. And that's why we are given the, the, the possibilities or the thought process to correct mistakes. And I understand that's quite a bit, uh, but as a deist, I've concluded uh, the following. I have free will. God does not control or intervene with my free will. I believe he gave me reason, so he doesn't have to. Uh, instead, he gave me the natural law of cause and effect, which can sometimes provide me with consequences for certain actions. Uh, I've been provided the gift of reason in order to help make sense of this nature, and the ability to learn from mistakes as so, uh, so as to not, not to repeat them after injury when I exercise free will, free will recklessly. Uh, nature has its own rules, which can't be broken. These are God's laws. Uh, I cannot invoke God's favor upon myself or my decisions. Uh, and only upon death will I learn of anything else I am supposed to know in this regard. To me, free will is very real. Uh, the idea is very complex, but also quite simple, uh, which in my opinion follows nature's model. In nature, everything seems to be very, very simple, but at the same time, highly complex. Um, which obviously, to me, solidifies free will. I know there are people who debate the existence of free will, 
but um, nature is an amazing thing. The body is an amazing thing, and, and it's, it's here for our survival. Uh, everything else kind of follows suit. Some ideas. Be a part of the conversation. Leave some comments. Uh, like the videos you like. Dislike the ones you don't. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another edition of Devout Deism. We'll see you next time. Thank you.